Let's imagine a small town, 2,000 citizens on the east side of Poland. And let's also imagine a young boy, 14 years old boy, who slightly distinguished from his peers. He wears fashion clothes, he takes great care of his appearance. He has his own idea for life. And everything is okay, but at some point he starts to listen whispers that he is homosexualist. First signs of hate, face provocations. He tries to be brave, but this is too much, and he escapes. This is a story of Dominik Szymański. In 2015, he committed suicide by hanging himself on showlaces in his own home during his mother's absence. He left her a letter in which he wrote, I'm nobody. What is important in case of my speech is that Dominic was heavy bullied in the internet. And even after his tragic death, people who tortured him had been writing comments like, finally, finally he's dead. Finally, we don't have to look at him. Wave of hate directed to Dominic was huge, was dark and evil. And his school peers knew that they can do anything, they can write anything in the internet because their faults will disperse in endless digital depths. New technologies and the internet in the first place are changing us. 
There was no such tool in the history of mankind which so largely and deeply changed what we do, but most of all, how we think. Despite all the obvious good and bright aspects of digital revolution, I think that we should formulate one, in my opinion, extremely important question. Is the internet that we know the best internet that we could create? Psychological research about the internet shows that in some cases, in some circumstances, the simple fact of entering into internet-mediated communication can change our perception of other people, can change our thoughts uh, about them. Simple fact, communicated not face-to-face, -face, but through the internet. Andrea Flores and Kerry James, scientists from the United States, conducted very interesting research about connections between morality, ethics, and engaging young people in digital media. And they found that in the internet communication dominates extremely individual way of thinking, extremely relativistic way of thinking about other people. So, we have a very difficult situation. we all in, in the internet. But I, I think that uh, we also should formulate another question, because we all know the res uh, research about aggression in the internet. We know types and kinds of aggression about speech of hate. Uh, but the important question is, what are the more basic mechanisms which are leading to disinhibition of behavior in the internet? Which are the more basic mechanisms which are leading to aggression in the internet? I think we all know here, know the people who offline are relatively cultured, relatively calm, but when they sit in front of the computer, when they take their smartphone in their hand, something changed. They become nasty, they become aggressive, they become cruel. From the research conducted by Chelo Yun, South Korean scientist, internet scientist, emerges picture of the internet as a space where practically no empathy, cold digital fields, no empathy. In my opinion, the most appropriate term to, to call the situation is white digital west. We have to survive in the digital jungle and nothing else matters, only our goals. Another important thing in case of dark sides of the web is how certain way of using the internet can change our morality. Certain way. I think we all here know something about multitasking. Multitasking is searching for the information checking Facebook, answering emails, practically at the same time. Research shows that multitasking has now became the dominant mode of functioning in the internet. But there is one dangerous thing connected with multitasking. When we are in a such state, our mind goes to a several ways. One way to checking email, one way to searching for information, one way to uh, visiting social media. 
So we are mentally distracted to these different ways, to these different goals of activity in the internet. And when we are facing a serious moral problem, serious ethical problem in the internet, when we are seeing the victims of internet aggression, we don't react because it involves from us very intensive thinking and our minds are dispersed. From my, from my own research, in my own research I found that a uh, heavy level of multitasking goes hand with hand with egoistic way of thinking about other people. Of course, it's one research, but I think that um, that way is quite dangerous. Metaphorically speaking, when we have to face serious moral problem, we had to cognitive stop and had cognitive rest to think about it, to gather resources of our attention, to think about these people, about this situation, about this uh, aggression, maybe, in the internet. When we are surfing through the web, sometimes we also fall in some state which I call the paradox of virtual presence. At the same time, at the same page, we could have thousands or even millions and other internet users. But we don't know them. We don't know who they are. We don't know their history. We don't know their emotions. We only see the signs of their presence. We sit in a digital version of Plato's cave, seeing only shadows of real emotions, of real thoughts on our screen. And this is a serious problem. This fact connected with lack of attention, lack of concentration sometimes in the internet could make us much, much more egoistic, much more individualistic when we are thinking about other people. Rodiger Safransky, a great German philosopher, one of the greatest philosophers of, uh, philosopher of our times, uh, wrote that evil is a drama of choice. And the internet is a place of permanent choices. When we are opening the browser, we face the endless ocean of possibilities endless ocean of activities. Click on this link or not. Check this email or not. Search for this information or not. Simple decisions, simple choices, very simple. But there are also another kinds of choices in the internet. We could react to an internet aggression or not. We could help the victim of internet aggression or not. I think that we have to rebuild and recreate philosophy of thinking about new technologies. Rebuild this philosophy with a more human face. We have to react. We have to react, we have to help people who are suffering in the internet. And it's very simple, maybe only writing a comment to support him or her. Maybe engage in discussion to defend this victim. 
It doesn't involve from us any money, not so many time. I think we should let to the internet a fresh air of empathy and kindness, simple kindness. And I'm absolutely convinced that we have to try together break the silence about dark sides of the web. Thank you very much.